the turn of the century, last days of the Belle Epoque, of what has been comfortable middle-class security. Revolutionary futurist poets and painters warn of approaching disaster. Giorgio de Chirico expresses the same uneasiness with an atmosphere of silence and uncertainty. Flat, spectral figures. Dreamlike space. Distorted shadows of lurking menace. The end of the age of innocence. World War I blows old values to bits. Is this where 19th century rationalism is led? Are these the rewards of solid middle-class virtue? Painters say if a new art is born, it will be born out of disgust. In neutral Switzerland, disillusioned artists from all over Europe sit out the war. In 1916, in a narrow street in Zurich, poets and painters name their new art movement Dada, a nonsensical word picked by chance. Dada points out the inanity of middle-class culture. Francis Picabia's machine fantasies mock conventional ideas of logic and progress. Even the act of love is portrayed as an elaborate meshing of gears. Marcel Duchamp tries to break the bank at Monte Carlo by issuing debentures guaranteeing an interest of 20%. Duchamp humiliates art, says art is dead. Advertisements and commercial items are displayed as anti-art objects to show that the simplest object can be revealing. Man Ray invents rayographs. He meticulously photographs particles of dirt and creates an elaborate sculpture in dust. Banal newspaper ads become dramas which reveal the most secret desires. Anything goes in collage, rubbish, bolts, buttons, anything with image value that is irrational, disconcerting. Even in language. A pre-syllabic sonata by Kurt Schwitters. The wood reliefs of Jean Arp also speak in form language, improvisational, suggestive. <laughs> Dada posters and publications increase after World War I. Poets like Breton, Eluar, Zara make Paris the scene of the outrageous Dada gesture. 
They set the stage for a more disciplined art movement. Surrealism, with its revolutionary declaration of a new art, intense and Freudian. Surrealism will go beyond the real. It will give a system to the irrational, a form to the unconscious. The Surrealists look to the paintings of de Chirico and Carrat. Their works parody the sense of purpose and stability in classical painting. They deny the rationality of experience. They deny the strength of tradition. The Surrealists developed their theories at Eloire's country home and at the newly opened Surrealist Research Office. In the Paris of the 20s, the Surrealists find the world around them unreal, a hoax without meaning. They invite us to leave conventional reality for the unknown. Madame, a pair of silk stockings is not a leap into the unknown. Reality does not exist around us. We must seek it in our subconscious. We must lower ourselves like divers into the inner depths of man and discover the monsters that dwell there. The Surrealists rediscover the marvelous nightmares of earlier painters, Fusli and Redon. They discover a contemporary, Paul Clay, who adapts Freudian free association to art. The Surrealists hail it as automatic art, art without preconception, art without culture. Although Clay's work is hardly accidental, it is highly informed by painterly vision and discipline. Automatic art dominates the early years of Surrealism. Jean Miro joins enthusiastically in 1924. Rather than setting out to paint something, I begin painting. And as I paint, the picture suggests itself under my brush. The second stage is carefully calculated. The form becomes a sign for a woman or a bird. For me, a form is never abstract. It is always a sign of something. Max Ernst also uses automatic techniques to draw more deeply from the unconscious. He follows the free movement of his hand without preconception. Then he alters the random patterns into bizarre landscapes. Ernst says, with my own eyes, I have seen the appearance of things disappear, and at this, I felt a calm and ferocious joy. Ernst is also a master of the dream image of surrealist illusion. He is the complete surrealist, projecting his fantasies and obsessions with unlimited ingenuity.
Europe after the rain is an hallucinatory vision of war, a world bathed in acid. Here, Ernst applies large areas of color by using decals, another automatic technique. Yves Tanguy combines realistic style with unrealistic forms. Projections of his own inner reality. Mindscapes. Spontaneous images linked to memories of childhood. If I plan a picture beforehand, it never surprises me. And surprises are my pleasure in painting. Salvador Dali introduces the abnormal in human psychology, the paranoic. His symbols show a thorough familiarity with Freud. My ambition is to materialize the images of irrationality with a fury of precision. To make the world of imagination and irrationality as persuasive as the exterior world of phenomenal reality. I believe the moment is near when by active, paranoid thought. It will be possible to systematize confusion and totally discredit the world of reality. After Dali, the dream image dominates surrealism. The inner vision of René Magritte is quietly threatened. His images are prosaic, handsome, economical. Magritte's originality lies in his portrayal of disassociated objects. Metaphoric leaps which touch off a chain of associations. His humor is intense and deadpan. He describes his images as ideas capable of becoming visible only through painting. Paul Delvaux follows in the 30s with an intensely detailed world of illusion, wistful, passive. Victor Browner also joins the Surrealists in the 30s. He is influenced by Ernst and by Clay. Although Browner does not invent new concepts, his work has a spellbinding personal force. Objects and memories of childhood appear throughout surrealist work. Alberto Savino places them in a forest of nightmares. Savinio seizes on classic mythology and transforms it into images of private obsessions. Living in a small Montparnasse studio, Alberto Giacometti has strong bonds with the Surrealists. He formally joins them in the winter of 1929. His sculpture shares the fantasy life of surrealist painting.
With surrealism, Giacometti leaves real models. I began to work from memory. This yielded objects which were the closest I could come to my vision of reality. A structure, a sharpness, a kind of skeleton in space. For me, figures were never a compact mass, but like a transparent construction. Paris in the 40s, World War II. Artists abandon their squares and cafes to go into exile, ending the close-knit surrealist community. The last newcomer to work entirely within the surrealist idea is Mata. His scenes, too, are projections of psychological states. Influenced by Tangi, he improvises fantastic landscapes. then expands them into galaxies, the mind's journey into its own unconscious. A surrealist painter has said, the surrealists hailed the night as liberator. With their dreams and hallucinations, they went beyond the reality that so often hides love and poetry with a veil of hypocrisy.